side of this phone. So we got to about eight o'clock. That's the most I'm going to be here for. Um, and then I'm going to be chipping off. Cool. So let's get into this. Why this challenge? This challenge is um, really, really important because I feel like if we are ever going to change, if we're ever going to figure out um, how and where the, the direction is, of life is going to take us, we have to be honest with ourselves. And the Life Audit pre pre um, presents an opportunity for you to be honest with yourself and where you are right across the board. Um, <clears throat> The, the the problem that we have with the life audit is number one, a lot of people do it or mark themselves on impulse. So they do it right away. They see the challenge, bang, they put the scores down without really thinking about it. The second problem is a lot of people lie to themselves and actually don't like the thought of putting twos, threes or fours. So we'll bump them up slightly and maybe lie to themselves. And that's something that men do quite regularly. You know, and a lot of the time that a lot of the time that I have been working with men, there is almost that difficulty, that harrowing thought of facing up to actually where we are. And it is really tough. Mentally and emotionally, it's tough to, to, to challenge the ego, to, to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and take our head out of the sand and go, hey, look, this is where I am right now. You know, uh, I'm not happy with it. It makes me feel like crap. I'm not excited about it. But it is where it is. And I feel like we always need a start point before we start any journey, any process on, of the direction that we want to go and how we want to improve ourselves. So the first and foremost thing is that doing the life audit tells us exactly where we are. Think about an audit in another environment like a school or a, um, a company. What those audits do is tell the governing bodies all right, exactly how they are performing. And in theory, you are the governing body. And we're so caught up in the day-to-day -day life of the rat race, of firefighting, of sprinting on the hamster wheel of doom that we don't ever stop and think about actually, where am I? What am I doing? It's just react, react, react. And we, we never stop to really maybe think about actually, you know, this is where I'm not where, this is where I am, this is not where I wanna be, all right? So that, the life audit is important. I'm gonna take you through some things now that I feel are important. Now, these are key principles that I teach in my 28-day challenge, in my mastermind coaching group, on my roundtable personal um, coaching groups, and for other companies that I work for as well. Um, and I work with business owners, and I also work with men. But these are the fundamentals that I feel we need to establish to be able to grow and move forward. So it really, hopefully, will paint a picture for you about what we're trying to achieve here in terms of creating much stronger mentally and more resilient men so that you can be the best version of you so that you can everyone else gets that best version of you all right um the key thing here is to understand there is no quick fixes here there are no fads there are no two week hacks or um herbalife mentality towards changing the mindset this is a long-term tough slog and it's not sexy, it's hard work, it takes commitment, but understanding this process I'm about to teach you behind me is gonna really help you understand the bigger picture. So bear with it, it will take about five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna get into the questions. Um, as soon as you've caught up to this point, let me know you're in, let me know this is making sense, just hit the blue thumb buttons, it just allows me to know where you are in terms of time difference um, <clears throat> before we get in. Cool. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is go back to the intro yesterday. So if you remember, I talked about this structure here being our safe place, being our force field in terms of this is where we set up ground base. OK, this is our operational base. This is our, if you like, state of mind. This is our brain. This is our resilience. This is our mindset. This is our life. And all of this here is chaos. So yesterday we talked about how the chaos was work, self-pressures, self-judgment, low confidence, low self-esteem, ego, all of those things that are challenging us, negative people, the realities of the world, right? And what they're all trying to do is break through here. Now, this structure here for many people is wafer thin. And that's just because we haven't worked on ourselves for, long, for a long time. Okay, it could be a long time since you actually prioritize yourself and put yourself first. So we don't have solid foundations or fundamentals 
in our mind, in our state of mind to be able to go, right, I'm on this. And what happens is we start and usually after two or three weeks, we end up breaking and we end up slipping back into the old habits, right? Because the chaos breaks through. Now, the structure is built up of four corners, four pillars, health, relationships, personal development and your career slash business. And the more we work on ourselves in a balanced format, okay, which I'll be coming on to in a minute, the stronger that this structure becomes, the more resilient we become in our mentality, the more positive we are in terms of life, the better we handle chaos, the better we handle stress, the more focus we put on ourselves. And over four weeks, four months, four years, what ends up happening is that this becomes thicker and stronger and it's harder for the chaos to get in. And that's what working on ourselves looks like. If you like a visual, that is what working on our mind, becoming unbreakable, it means. So when I talk about being unbreakable, it means that you can't break into this structure because we're too strong. Okay, now let's have a look at some of the key points that I, I teach. Now, the, the mindset, we call elite operator. Okay, the mindset. Now, this is something that we have, I introduced in the 28 day challenge, but it's something that in the mastermind that is a character. Now, I want you to visualize, if you like, like you, many of you won't be military, but if you visualize watching a war film, the special forces SEAL teams that you see, Gucci, kitted up, meticulous, focused, driven, passionate, and professional like that's the way they attack a mission now if you visualize an elite operator that's what we try to establish as a subconscious like an alter ego way of thinking in theory it's your accountability looking back at you in the mirror you're looking at the are you looking at elite operator or you're looking at an alternative and every time you think about making a bad decision the elite operator which becomes your subconscious mind your alter ego inside of your brain what that does is says, is that the right decision? So that's that internal dialogue going on in here with your elite. So you have your elite, elite operator on this soldier, uh, shoulder and on this side, you kind of have the temptation. And what we're doing is connecting with that elite operator all the time. And what that is doing, okay, these are meant to come in into here, is building your resilience against the temptations of the world, against the chaos of the world. So when you want to react and snap, Boom, your elite operator kicks in. Would an elite operator do that? No, he wouldn't. So you build up that resilience. And that's how we build that up over a long period of time. The next thing is, is if you follow me, you probably know some of these things. Remember the mission. So having a mission in life is giving us the direction that we need. Finding that mission is helping us not only in our process. So the process teaches us through failure, through experience, through um, winning and the process is what develops the mission. I might say to you, what is your mission in life? What do you want to achieve? What, what is the, what is the uh, ultimate gain here? What, what are we trying to achieve? And what we're trying to do is find a North Star. So we find a North Star. And one of the ways that we teach this, and I teach this all the time, is to get people to think about a vision of where they want to be in 10 years from now. So where is your life in 10 years? And it's probably something that you, you probably haven't even thought about what you want to be at the end of the week, let alone the 10 years. And in the 28 day, we introduced this in week one. It's like create your 10 year vision. And then suddenly what you do is create a place that you want to be, a North Star, that allows you to create your own yellow brick road. And that yellow brick road takes you all the way to your 10 year vision. So you end up reverse engineering that to where you need to be today. And that creates the process, okay? So we're slowly starting to build up these four pillars with resilience through our uh, alter ego, and now finding a mission and getting direction. Then we create identity by having an emotional connection to show up. Now this is the biggest thing. Most people rely on motivation when motivation is, is wank, okay? Motivation is just an emotion. Just like jealousy, if you see your missus talking to a guy in a bar and you, she doesn't know him, you're gonna get jealous. If you see somebody that makes you happy, you smile, you feel happy around them. If you have to say goodbye to your pet dog and they die, you're gonna be sad. But the thing with all of these motions, they come and they go. When you watch a motivational video, when you watch something that's motivating, you feel that, 
that need to go and change or this is this is the time that I'm going to change this is what I'm going to do different and then it disappears it's like that hot water bottle when it's hot man motivation and you're ready to go but it gets cold very quickly and when it gets cold we're left with no no drive no passion no desire to achieve our mission so finding the emotional connection to show up is what helps through creating your identity so I want to get up and I want to be fitter and healthier for me so that I can be a better dad so I can be better in my career so I can find the job of my dreams so I can learn French so I can run a marathon and it's finding the emotional connection so it's all heart so even on the days that you don't feel like showing up and you say oh my god I just don't feel like getting out of bed right now bang that emotional connection is there and you set it on your alarm clock you're right remember the mission bang up ah, let's go what's the mission what's the direction okay progress so we talk always about the one percent a day one percent a day is the minimum requirement to move you in the right direction and if you are moving at one percent in the right direction over a year that's 365 percent over that year there are going to be some major changes to your life a one percent wimp could be showing up three times a week doing 20 minute workouts if you did that for a year would it change your life yes it would if you finish work on time every single day monday to friday would it make a difference to your family life yes it would so it's finding the one percent and avoiding the overwhelm by trying to do it all overnight by just trying to like i want to change my whole life all at once all at the same time what happens you crash and burn okay we end up falling on our asses so we talk about one percent a day and that's the need for progress because we need to feel like we're progressing but if we're progressing at one percent a day then bang we're winning okay last one is the three c's these are your foundations consistency of action consistency of action consistency of showing up number two is control of your time and your energy okay and your balance and your productivity in life okay and then the last thing is clarity of the direction that you're going clarity of who you are and what you want okay so if you're with me so far just hit the blue thumb button let me know that you've got this far if let me know in the comments is this making sense does this make sense to you before we go on to the questions finding an emotional connection is hard when you don't enjoy exercise it's finding something i enjoy that works for me I enjoy meditation start you know we do that 100 we'll be talking a lot more about the fitness and health with it tomorrow cool let me know you're with me is this making sense before we move on to the questions okay we've got some good questions here as well just a just a thumbs up will do let me know good yeah it's um it can be a little bit overwhelming like all of this trying to embrace all of this at once like i get it and, but this is why it's um this is why it's five days right it's quite intense trying to fit a lot in uh, the first two c's consistency control and clarity okay great 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 and um, can you reconfirm examples of consistency please yeah consistency of action consistency of showing up all right there we go if you want if i step to the side you can just screenshot it real quick definitely need to know where to start well that's a really good point simon definitely makes sense just need to figure out where to start every single one of you watching this you're starting this is you starting okay and, and whether you feel like you're at the bottom of everest like dale feels the only way is up and this is where we have to slip out of that victim mentality it doesn't matter if you're at the bottom of the pile it doesn't matter if you're in the trenches that's why every single one of you here, here are watching this because at some point at some place in your life you're not where you want to be i feel like i'm at the bottom of it i'm at the bottom of it, uh, bottom of everest like 110 percent you might not think that but in my world that's how i feel because my expectations soar way beyond my capabilities and that's my biggest problem there are some days when i wake up and i just don't feel confident and i think to myself what am i trying to do here 
And I've been doing this a long time. That is the reality, but because this is thick enough, I can bounce back a lot quicker and reconfirm the mission. I can go through each of these checkpoints and just bring myself back. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you think that people don't struggle. They do. It's absolutely down to you to want to show up. And every single one of you watching this, you are, have no doubts that you are starting a journey. This is, this is day one for some of you. 100%. 100%. Some of the guys that have worked with me for nearly four or five years, this was their day one. Right, questions. I'm going to ask these questions. So if you can just hold fire with any questions or anything you've got on that side, I'm going to answer these and then I'm going to open up the floor. Okay, uh, I'm finding it hard to put a number on personal development and relationships. Um, any advice on a structure for PD and relationships with kids in my case, then I can return to track progress. So one of the things I think is important to understand with PD and relationships is that it's, it's individual for you. It's how you perceive personal development and relationships. Now, relationships could be the relationship with yourself. What is the relationship with yourself? So how can you gauge and how can you factor in a score for a relationship with yourself? Now on Wednesday, I'll be talking a lot about how you are the number one priority before your wife and your kids, before anything, and why you must be that priority, all right? And I think that the relationship with yourself can be judged on your actions or your lack of actions. It could be judged on your uh, self-sabotage habits, it can be, are you going to bed? Give me a kiss. One second. I love you. Give me a kiss. I love you. Sleep well. I love your unicorn. I love your unicorn. I love you. Oh Kids, I love them. Um, and then your personal development. It could be an array of things. So how much are you doing for you? I mean... Are you listening to podcasts? Are you reading books? Are you learning French? Are you learning a new course? A lot of you are all doing personal development today. This is personal development for you. You're learning something. You're gonna take away something, hopefully. So really how you score it is down to you. It's not down for me to say, how, how do I factor this? It's, it's creating your own guidelines your own points. Like if I hit this point, that takes me to an eight. If I hit this point, it takes me to a nine. Just use the basic structure and use your own values and principles to guide and judge that. Okay, so any advice on how to measure your health rating if you have suffered a serious permanent injury or are falling chronically ill? Since the perception of our peak levels of health, we previously might have uh, been unrealistic now. So a really key fact here is that um, when you look at Paralympics, Para, Paralympians and you look at those guys and you think about where they were before they had maybe an injury that caused them to lose a leg or lose an arm um, or become blind or whatever the incident happened. I wonder whether their score would be higher or lower based on where they are now. I.e. what I mean by that, are they going to achieve more having fallen foul to an accident that's cost them their leg or their arm or their eyesight? compared to if they did have their leg? Have they achieved more? So would they actually score themselves more now that they have that, that disability or that illness? And I wonder whether when it comes to you scoring, James, whether you would look at what you are capable of and what you're doing versus your capabilities. And again, that's down to you and that's your own personal preference, okay? And I think that's what's really important to understand. Suffering from major social anxiety amongst other things has so far prevented me from doing the career I want. How do I begin to overcome one of the main reasons that is preventing me from pursuing this? So the only way to um, really think about this, anxiety is very much that fear of unknown. And when we're in a social environment, it's very much like we struggle. I, I, I feel this is what it is. We struggle with an internal confidence. We st struggle with an internal self-belief self-esteem that we feel that we're good enough to be in that habitat and that environment and whenever i've suffered with social anxiety in the past um i feel that it's all got a little bit too much and i end up comparing and judging myself compared to everyone else and i know many men do that because i've 
got to talk to lots and lots and lots and lots of men, thousands of men over the years. And that's what happens. You build up an inferior uh, uh, identity that you're not good enough to be in that group. And I think what we have to start with is building some self-belief, which means adapting an elite operator mindset. That means building control. That means building some momentum and self-esteem along the way. The only way that this starts is by you starting. If we keep saying, oh, how do I do it? This is affecting me. When we keep telling ourselves these things, we believe them. I can't do this. This is something I can't do. So if you can't, if you keep saying you can't, then you won't. All right. But you can overcome because you can build that momentum and it might not happen in a week. It might take, might take two weeks. But suddenly when you start changing habits, you start changing thought processes. When you start thinking more positively, you start acting more positively. And in the long run, you're going to end up winning because you're going to start thinking, wow, I feel like I'm ready to go out. I feel like I'm ready to mingle. I feel like I'm ready to apply for jobs. And the only way sometimes we can do this is having that breakthrough, is, is taking everything that you're learning, everything you're embracing and making that breakthrough. I really hope you go and do that anyway, Simon, for sure. I feel my career is impacting me in other areas, i.e. confidence, assertiveness, etc. As I have no joy or fulfillment in it and struggle to do the job, what's the best way to understand what will be the best career move there is? Nothing that directly stands out as I am keen uh, out as a keen interest for me to pursue. So we have this an awful lot. Uh, and in the mastermind, it's something that's rife. And it's something that we have worked on changing for many of the guys. And in the last 18 months, many of the guys have actually changed the jobs to do what they want to do. The first thing I would say is that you need to have a career plan. So what we're not going to do, James, is not, change, not leave that job and leave ourselves financially exposed because that can't happen. But what we can do is say that, look, in the space of six months, I want to be out of this place. Even if it's just into a job that gives me a fresh challenge, a fresh habitat, a fresh idea, a fresh boss, a fresh uh, in, um, travel to work or commute to work, something that is just different. And then we start planning for that six months. So how do I, how do I get out of this job and get into another job? Right, I need a CV. I need to start putting myself out there. I need to start doing interviews. And through this process, your mission then suddenly becomes hey, I want to change my career. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I know I don't want to do this because it makes me happy. So trying something different, maybe it works out well for me. So you create the mission, you create the process, and along the way, you start figuring out what you do and don't want. When we stay the same, we don't experience any of that. that, that. We don't go to interviews. We don't experience new habitats. So we just stay the same and we put up with it. We accept but if we create that mission and that process and we have that plan, now we're working to something. Now we can get excited about something. I've got an interview. I've got two interviews. I've been offered a job. Bang. And then suddenly we, we're starting to feel a lot different about everything that's going on in our career. Cool. Um, bum, 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 bum. Tips on systems or routine to prioritize tasks. Be organized and motivated without it taking a day to figure out. Tips on systems and routines to prioritize tasks. So I'm going to be talking a lot about routines and priorities and tasks later on in the week. But to kind of give you some system, it's about really, remember the second C, control of your time and energy and balance. So when we plan our week, something that we're huge on is, is gaining control and order of our lives. Gaining control and order of our lives. And we do that by managing our time and our energy. Now, when we know what we need to achieve over the week, by the end of the week, we then know what we need to achieve each day. So if the board's full. So if you are here, this is what we want to achieve. We've got five days worth of milestones to maybe hit that. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we start ticking off the things that we need to achieve to then get to the end of the week and go, right, all of those 1% wins have led to us achieving what we needed to at the end of the week. 
Cool, uh, I tend to procrastinate with my personal development and getting myself motivated to give my boys, my boy goals to aim for. Also advice on how to plan your work day more efficient would be good. So I'm gonna, Matty, I'm gonna talk about the work day being more efficient later on in the week. Um, in terms of procrastination, um, I tend to procrastinate with my PD and getting myself motivated to give my boy goals to aim for. So. I guess the motivation is the thing that's letting you down because it's not a strong emotion. It's not something that's strong enough to make you act. But if you could find an emotional connection to make your boy show up, understand the reasons and the benefits that he will get for it, and you connect with that emotionally, then I think procrastination um, it kind of disappears. Procrastination is just a, a, a habit that we fall into. And how you do anything is how you do anything. And we did this test actually, we did this challenge in the early days of the mastermind. And it was a case of if anything needed doing, you just do it there and then. So silly things like taking the bin out, washing up, um, putting your laundry away right away. Just all those simple, simple jobs that we just go, I just do that later, I just do that later, I just do that later. And because you're saying that, that's the way that your brain responds to anything. So when it comes to work or tasks or exercise, you go, I'll just do that later. Of course, it's not going to be anything different because your mind only knows one way of thinking. Oh, I'll just do that later. But if we go, I'll just do that now. I'll just do that now. I'll just do that now. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, try it this week as part of the challenge. Do it as an extra challenge. Just go, I'm just going to do that now. Just start doing. When you think of something that needs doing, if it can be done there and then, do it. Do it. Kev, okay, it, it may seem like an obvious answer, but well, let's keep, it, keep these questions simple, guys. Uh, basically, what is your best approach at picking yourself back up after failing? Right, listen, there is no such thing as failure. Okay, the attitude and mindset towards failure is awful because as soon as you think that you haven't achieved something, you start to self-doubt yourself and you start to beat yourself up and you start to crumble. Failure is an experience. So then we have the motto of learn, grow, repeat. Learn, grow, repeat. You are only failing if you're not failing. And let me explain that. You are only failing if you're not failing because if you're not failing, you're not trying. You're not doing. You're not getting up and showing up. People that fail or don't achieve their expectations are the people that are not doing anything, are just complaining and moaning and sitting there and going, oh yeah, you know, I am struggling with this. I don't know how to start. I'll procrastinate on this. That's like failure is not doing anything about it because you're, you're too worried to fail. Failure is experience. How this gets thicker is by failing. It's like a muscle. When you bicep curl, you break down your microfibers. And over time, they come back stronger and stronger and stronger. Just like you, when you don't achieve your expectations. Learn, grow, repeat. Learn, grow, repeat. Process, process, process. Don't have a negative approach. I've got my hay fees kicking off. Don't have a negative approach to failure. Think of it as a positive. Uh, as a mental nurse, health and psychotherapist, I am able to provide excellent care and treatment for my patients, but I often neglect my own well-being for others. How can I stop falling into this trap? That's a classic one as well. Um, it, when we give all our time, all of our energy to everybody else, we have none for ourselves. We put everybody else before us. And this is such a common thing for guys. We put everybody else's needs before us. And on Wednesday, you're gonna learn some real tough lessons about how to put yourself first. How you must be the priority. Because if you don't have, if you don't look after yourself, if you don't put the time and energy into you first, how can you be the best dad? How can you be the best boss? How can you be the best mate? How can you be the best husband? You can't. You get swept under the bus, you give everything to everyone else, then you're left with nothing. You're exhausted mentally, emotionally, burnt out, fried. So put yourself first. On Wednesday, we'll go into that in much more detail. What techniques can I use when something goes wrong with my plans? I lose my shit, okay. Just roll with the punches. Like reality dictates in this life and the way that life is predicated for us is that life is not a walk in a park. It's not Disneyland. 
I think people feel like they're gonna try, they're trying to get to that Disneyland experience where you go into Disneyland, everything's perfect, perfect uh, uh, ever after story. You know, the, the ending is, is great it's, and we smiles and we're happy. That perfect mentality of what life looks like. Life is not Disneyland, life is tough. T life is gonna throw you curveballs when you least expect it. And the way that we overcome those is by showing the resilience, is by understanding that we are actually on a journey, okay? And that we can build our barriers stronger to be able to suck up those things that are happening, embrace them, and then act like the elite operator who remembers his mission, who is emotionally connected to the bigger change, and will control the things that he can control and let go of the things that he can't. I always say that when people say it is what it is, it's because they have a good grasp of how to deal with the things that are out of their control. Because there's no point in stressing about it. You just refocus, realign, and go again. And how you do that is, oh, I know some of you are gonna say, well, that's easy for you to say, that's really hard to do. But if you don't start it, and it doesn't become a mental practice or a habit or a routine or ritual, ritual, um, how can you, how can you possibly even get to that place of conditioning on your mind? Everything we're doing is conditioning ourselves. It's like being a white belt in jiu-jitsu. When I was become a white belt, I used to get choked out every time. Now, three years later, I'm a good blue belt and things have changed and you condition yourself. Just like your mentality to dealing with failure, to dealing with curveballs, to dealing with the, with the chaos. Because you build these pillars up and you build this structure up. And you're doing it now, today. You're doing it right now. Many of you probably don't realize what a big leap you're taking being here. You should be proud of yourselves. Um, how do you manage time between the gym, which helps uh, me and the family time and holding down a full-time job? Where can I work? Where can I work away and do 60 hour weeks? How do you manage time between the gym, which helps me and family time? Right, okay, so the balance and the time. So I'm gonna go into this again in much more detail on the Thursday. I don't want to start treading on the toes, but it all really comes down to micromanaging your time and your week. Remember the second C, control. Control of your time and energy. Okay, managing that time. And now it's a case of getting a good morning routine, which I'm gonna talk about in detail on Thursday. And I'm gonna probably ask, ask, answer that, Carl, when we get there. Um, I'm falling down and a full-time job where I can work away and do 60 hours. I'm not sure what you mean by that one. Um, I'm aware that my health is a mess and I need to find my why. How do I improve my mindset so I can focus on myself and those that I love? I'm due to be a granddad in the next couple of weeks. Congratulations, Matthew. There's your formula. Initiate the mindset of an elite operator. Build that alter ego as part of your accountability. When you look in the mirror, start asking yourself the question. It doesn't matter that your health is a mess now. What matters is what you're gonna do about it. Like I can't come to you, physically get you up and say, hey, let's go. You have to meet me halfway. You have to find your emotional connection, which is being a granddad. You wanna be fit and healthy. You wanna see those kids grow up, right? Like all of us as dads, if you're a dad. I wanna see my, I wanna see my three girls walk down the aisle. I've got a one week year old in there. So I've gotta be around for the next 30 years to watch Little one walk down the aisle. That's my emotional connection every time I feel like I'm just gonna eat junk or I'm not gonna run or I'm not gonna exercise. The consequences, the alternative is not, is not doing that. You know, we've got one life. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we're making the most of it. Okay, last couple of questions and then I'll open up the floor, guys. Um, we're killing it for time. Uh, I'm very unhappy in a job of 14 years, shift work, emergency services. Thank you for your service. Um, I've tried to change roles internally and it's just not going anywhere. I have issues outside of work and need stability, flexibility to get good work-life balance. I've had pretty bad stress and anxiety and it's affecting my everyday life. I've looked at other careers, but getting desperate now, what can I do? So Mark, I think you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. In one respect, there's a job that's crippling you. On the other hand, you're trying to find work-life balance you're gonna to have to find a compromise. You could easily, and, and I know this because for the last year and a half, since COVID's happened, we've been working with the lads to find the careers that make them happy because most people's unhappiness 
comes from their career. If you think in a career, if you think in a career, um, if you think in a career, you end up in a career of 30 years, that's like a life sentence. And if you are gonna stay in that job for those 30 years and be unhappy, are you, I just want you to get out of that mentality because you can change and it's probably just the confidence that you think you can't and you can. And I want you to, and I want you to be happy and like I want you not to go home stressed out, taking out and everyone or drinking yourself into oblivion or having dark negative thoughts about how you're gonna cope and how you're gonna get yourself up. You know, you have to have that belief that you can change. But for you, Mark, you've got to know what the compromise is. There's got to be some compromise in here. You're just saying on one hand you want to change and on the other hand you can't. So you have to you have to make a decision and you have to make it logically, not emotionally. Um, however, will um how However well, or oh, however well or positive I am, I find it takes one small negative situation to knock me back and upset my routine. This can lead to increased anxiety and stress, mainly related to work. Uh, any good tips on reframing how to ignore these stupid little negatives? So remember what I spoke about here. When we're at the beginning, this is way for thin. The chaos gets in, bang. And it completely consumes us like a virus. It takes over. And, uh, and Anthony's talking about that, that's what happened. One negative thing happens, and that's in this chaos, bang, and it seeps into our mindset. Working on yourself, focusing on yourself, having some health, journaling, gratitude, having routines in your morning on the way from work to home, having what we would call a transition routine to get yourself out of work mode to personal mode. All of these things condition our mind not overnight, it takes time, it's not, it's, it's not easy, it's hard work, but what's the alternative? To continually stay consumed or to make a proactive approach to becoming mentally more resilient? Elite operator, okay? Sounds chad, right? I get it, but it works because you build it up and it gets stronger and it gets stronger and it gets stronger. Okay, if there's any questions, guys, on the other side of here, please do start asking. All right, I'm on the last question here. It's my mindset. Since my dad passed, I'm struggling to find enjoy in anything, enjoyment in anything, which is now affecting my job and family life. So I would say, Steve, one of my first questions would be to you, have you accepted his death? So first of all, massive condolences about losing your dad. I lost my dad at five. So, um, you know, I know how difficult it is to be without a dad. And one of the things that I want you to maybe think about, have you accepted the death? Which is really, really difficult to ask because it can consume you. And usually when it comes to death and people talking about losing people, it's, it, it's one of those things where you haven't accepted it and it consumes you without even realizing it. So maybe ask yourself that question and then maybe look at ways that you can accept it, can embrace it to be able to move forwards. Cool, all right, let's get any questions in here. Um, do you create a body approach in this system so we can help each other uh, on the journey? Not in this particular one, buddy. So, not on the five day. There are just too many people. Um, not enough of the people that join are committed, so people end up without bodies. We have, um, in the 28 day, we have an ambassadors who you've met one of them today, which was Paul. And those guys nurture you through the program with me, John and Mike. Um, and then in the mastermind, we create micro accountability buddies. So behind the scenes, they kind of have WhatsApp groups or Facebook groups or whatever approach they want to kind of just kind of jig themselves up. And the way that we use our accountability system is that we have percentages of what people are showing up. So when we call people out, we can then go, hey, it's your job, i.e., you're his accountability buddy, why isn't he showing up? So we can put, the, we can put that on, on their bodies to be able to say, hey, look, this is your responsibility. Uh, Alex, work and career are resulting, and, uh, result, resulting in unhappiness seems to be coming up a lot tonight. Will Pamela be coming back to talk again in the Mastermind or is it available to watch back? Yep, it's available to watch back, Alex. If you go to the courses in the Mastermind, you'll see guest experience, uh, guest um, experts 
and the live that she did or the training that she did for you is in there. Love your podcasts. I play them when out for a walk and run. Keep them coming, JB, and thanks for the motivation for helping me keep on track with my goals. Anytime, Dave. Thanks for being here, brother. Anytime, Alex. Anytime, Steve. Anytime, Alex. So any more questions, guys? Like, I, you've got me for another 10 minutes. So I'm here if you want to ask me anything. There's anything that's unsure here. Anything you would like me to clarify? Um, how have you found tonight? Has it been beneficial for you? I really hope so. I really hope you've got some value out of this. And I'm hoping that those that were skeptical are less skeptical now. Got a question, but it's more appropriate to tomorrow, I think. Should I hold it? No, um, hold it for tomorrow. Simon Kingsman, I recognize that rock. I'm pretty sure that's up in um, North Wales. I'm pretty sure I've got a picture of me on that rock. John, good stuff. Great to hear. Kraken Mastermind Machine so much. Thanks. Good at Kia. Great to have you, dude. Glider Fash. Yeah, I'm sure I was there. I did. I used to, when I was in the Marines, I used to be an outdoor instructor. So I used to be a mountaineer leader. I'm pretty sure I was up there. Apart from having aimless. Oh, wow. They're coming in now. Sugar. Apart from having aimlessly wandered through life, one of my problems at the moment is my partner has a brain tumour. It's completely out of my control. Do you have any thoughts on how to process this situation? So Dale, I think like that's a really tough situation. So first of all, um, I'm really sorry that that's happened. Secondly, I hope is it hopefully it's something that you can pull through um, depending at what stage or what's happening. But I think in terms of you, um, I have one of my clients whose wife has, I think, six months left to live. And when we talked about this and we talked about what he could do, we really talked about how he could be the leader of the situation. So when there is so much uncertainty and upset and emotion going through the partner's mind, this is the one time where we feel we need to make sure that we're showing up as the leader, encouraging and being strong. And that really comes down to the, this emotional connection to showing up. Dave, Dale, if you ever have ever needed a, a reason to show up and be the best version of yourself, not just for you, but for everyone else around you, then this would be it, my man. And I know it's very difficult and I know it's probably all encompassing and it's just very difficult to deal with. And no one ever teaches us to deal with this. But I feel like this is one of those things that you're going to have to adapt and overcome the curveballs that come with it. But be in the right state of mind to deal with those curveballs and be in the best possible position. I always kind of relate it to you can train for war, but when we actually went to war, all of the training doesn't really prepare you for the curveballs that you're facing. But you can the best that you can do is prepare yourself for it. Uh, I hope that it gives you some comfort, dude. Looking forward to the transition from work mode to home mode. Yep, we'll be uh, discussing that on Thursday, Steve. Baz, if you miss a session, are they replayed? I'm booked into the gym induction tomorrow at seven. Yep, Baz, you can watch this anytime. This group closes a week today. Really beneficial. Thanks very much. Good to hear, Daryl. Thanks for having thought to you. Anytime, Matty. How do you talk yourself out of bed um, to do your morning fizz when the weather's bad? I don't need... I've got to that point now where I don't even... It's non-negotiable. It's like literally non-negotiable. For me personally, if I can't get myself out of bed and do what I preach, I'm in no position to be able to lead other guys or be able to encourage other guys or mentor other guys. I'd end up being a fraud. So there is that emotional connection. But for me to want to be where I want to be, and I've been in that place, that alternative place, you know, very many years ago, I sat on the edge of a bed with a ton of pills and a bottle of whiskey, ready to index everything because I had got myself in such a state. That is the alternative to me not getting up. And you might think well, it's a bit extreme, but if I got up, if I didn't get up every single day, that would spiral out of control. That's why I need to make sure that I am in the prime conditioning that I am mentally, emotionally so that I'm at, my, at the best. You know, that was a long time ago after, after the military. I didn't know who I was, I had no direction. So that morning routine, regardless of the weather, 
makes me want to get up. And it's me, it's a war, it's me versus the, the world. And I will never let the world win because that's the mentality that you build. Also, I absolutely loved the video yesterday when the weather way, oh, crap, did you do this this morning? Really fired me up. Uh, yeah, so I did that video on Sunday morning, okay? And then obviously there's always the Rise to Thrive shows on the Man Coach page. I can see this helping me with my career change out of the police. Got no idea what to do, ha but have PTSD and lost, uh, and lost, uh, lost feeling invigorated by tonight. Thanks, bud. Anytime, Mark. Work with a lot of police, a lot of police. In fact, working with a senior policeman who is leaving his career at the end of the year, and we're working towards him building his career outside of the police. It is a very daunting time transitioning from something you've known for many years to then going into another part of your life that you have no idea what's coming. And you're like, oh, uncertainty, anxiety, self-doubt, worry. But Mark, hang in there, keep this strong. All of you said, yeah, um, thanks James, anytime Baz. Thanks for tonight, looking forward to learning more. Anytime Alan, great to have you. Do you have a list of 1% achievements so I can focus on all of the possibilities? So think of anything. So I don't because it's personal preference. If you look at this video as a 1% win, if you're still here, that's a 1% win. If you do the challenge tomorrow, that's a 1% win and it's a different type of challenge. You're gonna love it. If you get out of bed when your alarm goes, that's a 1% win. If you decide not to have a beer, that's a 1% win. If you decide not to have a cigarette, that's a 1% win. If you decide to go to bed and not watch Babe Station at 11 o'clock at night, that's a win. All of the micro small things that take us in the right direction. Use your imagination. All of the things that you do when you don't do them is a 1% win. If it moves you in the right direction, it's a win. Uh, anytime, Alex. Yep, yeah, all those videos are coming there, as long as the baby kick doesn't keep me awake all night. Before lockdown three, I was rocking my morning routine up at 6 a.m. and in the gym classes for 7 a.m. and feeling pumped before my work day, struggling to get that routine back. Any tips? So Stephen, I'm gonna please ask that question on Thursday because that really, we go into detail about doing the morning routine. But what I would say, just in short, is remember how good it felt to be up. The way that I see a morning routine is that the world is mine when I'm out down at the seafront at 4.45 in the morning to 6.30, it's my world. I don't see anyone. It's me, the sea, the sunrise if it comes up, or the rain or hail if it's coming down. Me and my thoughts, me and my world. It's almost like an apocalypse. And remember how amazing that feels. You can sleep whenever you want. When you wake up, it's only painful for, what? Four minutes, it's like, oh my God, I'm a zombie. And then, and then you wake up, splash water in your face, have a drink of water, get your bag on, get your coat on, get out that door. Makes more sense than I've been able to make. Thank you, good Dale, I'm really pleased with that. Big motivation, cheers bro. Up and out first thing, good man, Dean. When you were suffering with PTSD, what was your first step to help overcome it? Accept it. A uh, really good question, because I didn't know I had it. I didn't know I had it until, until I finally got some help and uh, they pretty much said, you're struggling with, like, a, you need a baby. You're pretty much struggling with trauma. And um, I always felt, I didn't really understand PTSD. I came out of the military in September 2011, so I didn't really know too much about it. I didn't, I didn't really think it was a thing. I suspect at that point in my life, my ego refused to believe it. Um, and for about two, three years, uh, I didn't even consider it at all. And then as soon as I accepted it, I started working on controlling measures. So things that allowed me to um, focus more on what I can control, i.e. creating a mission, i.e. small steps, i.e. moving in the right direction, morning routine, and thinking about the things that I wanted out of my life, think, thinking about how I wanted to live my life. Then I met Jemima, um, who, who is my long-term partner, 
and um, she gave me purpose. She uh, gave me somebody to talk to um, because I never spoke to anyone, you know, classic wearing the mask. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm really good. Yeah. And I'm like crying at home, like all the time. You know, this is a long time ago. This is like between 2011 and 2013-ish time. Um, but that's my alternative spot. That bubble of my chapter, that chapter of my life is always the alternative to not showing up. And that's why I'm going through that is what makes me so passionate about helping guys and working with guys. And that's what makes me equally as frustrated when guys don't show up like on programs that I do or courses that I do or in the room, my mastermind and I'm banging my head against a brick wall and I'm like, why do I give more of a fuck about your development than you do? And I just need people to try and see the picture, but you can't help people that don't want to be helped. I kind of strayed there slightly. Okay, uh, sleep deprivation is my issue. So I'll be talking about that on Thursday because I feel that sleep is a, just a matter of habits and it starts with, from when you leave work, okay? Um, very briefly, getting yourself into a nice transition mode to clear the mind. When we don't sleep, we've got so much on our mind going on. And there are things like brain dumps, um, tricking the mind in terms of distracting it, in terms of thought process, in terms of whether you're tired or not, going to bed and learning, allowing your body to change its body clock, learning to relax. But I'll go into a little bit more detail on that um, on Thursday. Awesome advice as always. Anytime, Joe, you're more than welcome, brother. How do I find the middle ground? Um, pardon me. How do I find the middle ground between the two extremes of my mind thinking, logically and my anxiety symptoms telling me to run good question and i truly believe it's by showing up what you have no what you don't have right now is experience in terms of finding that middle ground to be able to find the middle ground you need to be showing up every single day but you need to be able to connect with that so journaling expressing your thoughts understanding yourself we only understand ourselves when we get up and we act. When we just sit there, ponder and think, we overthink. We go into, um, we go into a like black hole of thoughts and emotions. Whereas when we show up, we experience the emotions. We experience the vast, like different contrast or context of, hey, I'm running or actually I'm showing up. Okay, and trying to think more logically. And the better you get at it, the more conditioning you get at it. It's like going to a gym. You don't just suddenly go to a gym and you go, right, okay, yep, uh, I know what weight I'm gonna be deadlifting. What you do is you start lighting the deadlifts and then you kind of build up strength over time. Same with bicep curls, you start maybe with the eights and then suddenly four months down the line, you're on 20s. And you're just conditioning and you're learning what weight you can lift and what weight you can't lift. When you're ready to get to that 160 deadlift, I'm not ready there yet. I need to improve A, B, and C. So being on the ground, doing the work, showing up is always what exposes us and teaches us. Learn, grow, repeat. Great advice to support. Anytime, Matty, you're welcome. Love your challenges. Love it. Thanks, Kia. Appreciate it. I'm looking forward to taking your tips and getting back to carpentry and joinery. Love it, Carl. Boop, 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 boop. Cracking tonight. Uh, thanks. More of a lighthearted question. Is there a particular reason why you emphasis emphasize the H in host on your shows? So really good point. So it started off just as a bit of a Mickey take and then it suddenly become a signature thing. So now I just do it all the time. Um, it's just it's, it's just a stupid thing I do. Makes me human. Um, I'm really struggling with my weight right now, which is having a knock-on effect uh, with my confidence, of course. Um, to get out there and do something, I have a heart that wants to make a change, but a head that holds me back. Any tips to overcome this? Um, so Luke, tomorrow is all about fitness, mindset and fitness, mindset and fitness. And I don't, I, I am really keen not to tread on toes of tomorrow. But I really want you to ask this question tomorrow, Luke. So when it comes to the Q&A, will you copy and paste it and will you put it on the Q&A for me? Because I don't want to dive into too deep with it because what it would do is trigger other guys to ask questions about health. 
and I just want to keep it on this introduction side. I hope you understand. I'm even going to make a note of it in case you don't. Because I, I want to answer that because it's a really pivotal question. It's a really good question. Cool. Any advice for supporting a partner with PTSD and mental health issues causing relentless chaos and derailing my progress and routines? Um, I can imagine that's a very tough situation. Um, I've worked with many men in the same situation. One of the things I think that really helps is studying about mental health and what PTSD is, um, traits, ways to help, ways to cope. Um, again, very much like our man we've spoken about with his partner who had the brain tumour is very much learning to have more resilience, more patience, more understanding. I know how difficult it can be, um, but I think if we have more communication and more understanding of the situation, um, it makes it easier to be more patient um, in that respect. And I can understand it's really relentless and chaotic and derailing your progress, but the fact that you know, you're there supporting her still shows what a great guy you are and how much effort you're putting into the process. So don't, don't forget how, how, how hard you're working here as well. Um, and sometimes we overlook that fact that many people would run, many people would step out of that situation and not support their partner. So absolutely cracking, cracking effort, Joe, and keep it going. Cool. Lost a bit of live feed, technical issues. We'll watch again soon, no problem, dude. Screen is frozen, anyone else? Oh dear, okay. What time is it? Oh, my watch has died. Okay, last couple of minutes, guys. Otherwise, um, I'm not gonna get any time with the missus and the baby. Did you learn techniques from the forces after you left? I love your noble shit style. Awesome, exciting, cracking. Thank you, dude, I really appreciate it. It's just me. No, I didn't, no. This is just literally me. First couple of years, I was a bit worried about what people thought of me. And then I was just me, and then you either like me or you don't like me. You either want to work with me or you don't want to work with me. And I just, I think if you stick to your path, stick to who you are and your identity, um, you end up attracting the people that are like-minded. You know, I consider everyone I work with a mate and get on really well with. Um, and, and it's funny because positive creates positive. It breeds positive. And I just like that straight talking. I needed straight talking when I left the military. I needed it. I need somebody to just say, look, snap out of it. But I am working really hard not to swear as much. Okay, and a lot of people say, oh, swear, show passion. But I do. I usually swear excessively. But it's one thing that I am trying very hard to manage. So <laughs> I think I've only sworn once tonight. Cool, cool, cool. Another great session. Brilliant. Thanks, James. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad you enjoyed it. And it Anything to say really is thank you. You're more than welcome, Dale. Right, lads, have a great evening. I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's a different type of challenge tomorrow. Just do what you can do. Enjoy the process. <laughs> um, I'm only laughing because I know what's coming. But some, for some of you, it'll be easy. For some of you, it will be a challenge. All right, um, just enjoy it. Embrace it. The thing that, that and I want you to, I just want to finish by saying this. The reason I chose tomorrow's task is because I want to draw that out of you. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. Boom, boom, boom. All right, that's what I wanna draw out of you. Skin.